Uh, Fleece Bristol, I think it's day three of you guys being in the UK. London tomorrow, I think. Uh, we London. have tomorrow's Leeds and then London. That's it. Yeah. Yep. And uh, actually, it's we were in Ireland, so after Ireland is a day three, but we we were here for a week before that. Excellent. So it's Excellent. it's a proper UK tour. About time. Yeah. We used to always spend like we'd leave, we'd come here to the UK and and, and play like four or five gigs and then go and spend two weeks in Germany. It's mm. like the fuck this is you know this is our second home we get along there's no language barrier the food the people we feel uh closer you know yeah it's a little bit more like home so i think that was so, the case of the last time i saw you guys was just before reborn yeah. was launched and that was at the canon world in yep at the underworld in london yeah and you'd had it again that had been a very short uk uh it was only a couple yeah. of days again so. yeah so this time is a way for us to um, spend more time here, you know. And we always would leave the UK and be like, "What the? F how come we just played four shows in the UK? It's yeah. a massive country. Let's spend more time." So this time around, we just, we were like, the tour originally was supposed to be like just a UK tour. Yeah. And we were like, told our agent, "Let's we just we want to go to the UK, just hit every you know place that will take us, and uh, and you know, two, give us two weeks, just in and out." go and play everywhere we can play and instead of playing you know uh, Bradford for example yeah. let's go to Keithley you know shit like that and um, we played Cardiff and you know before it was you play Bristol but you don't play Cardiff mm. and everybody from Cardiff ha Cardiff has to drive you know from South Wales has to drive over here and you know so it's, it's a way for us to you know spread it out a little bit and, and come to you instead of having you come to us yeah that's cool that's actually really sound for your fans as well because yeah, I, I, I don't, it's better for us too. I mean, I, th I think the um, the shows are more intimate and yeah. more fun, you know, and, and um, like we played in Cardiff, this small place right by the castle. I, I know you're not Welsh, but it's... Uh, uh, bogies? No. No? Nope. Was it Bogies? I don't remember. Bogies is obviously the Cardiff Garrison. Yeah, maybe there. But it's fucking awesome gig, <laughs> you know. Good time, good city. And then tonight here at the Fleece, we played the Fleece years ago and had a blast, so it's like to play it again. Yeah. That says you. I've noticed that you really thrive on the up close, personal sort of shows. I know you guys really get on like with the Australian Soundwave tour, which is a massive venue. Yeah. Obviously, but then you have got the big pit bar, pit and um, yeah, security barrier between you and the fans. Normally, about twenty plus foot, and you're way up above the crowd as well. So yeah, we kind of learned our lesson at Donington years ago. <laughs> that we don't we don't get on great with the big separation things. It, it it it's too in, unequal unequal to me. You know what I mean? Mm. Like it's it's something about being up in front of somebody's face when you you know you could slap each other's hands, say what's up. Kids come on stage, you know, and and, have, and jump off and kick you in the fucking teeth. <laughs> it's real. You yeah. know what I mean? That's where I I think Biohazard thrives the most. That's mm. where I I enjoy it most. I still dig playing. You know, it's nice to play outside. Um, you know, where there's air. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, it, it it there's a certain kind of connection that you have um, and it's a different kind of connection in, in festivals you know mm. it's a bigger audience and the, the cycle of energy bounces back in a different way it takes a lot longer to build up that that power I think in a smaller venue you go on stage and that first song it just sets off it's like lighting you know um, putting a match to, uh, you know got wood soaked with gasoline it's yeah, like yeah. whoop it just ignites real quick and then it's an hour and 15 minutes of fucking chaos. <laughs> it's a good time. Real good time. And the other good thing, so about the smaller venues, is obviously the tour bus is parked right next to it. Yeah. So the fans can have a chat with you as you were uh, speaking with the fans earlier on. So sort of yeah, I, I, I think it was different between us and a lot of other bands. I hate the word fans. I don't, I was just telling someone else about that. I don't, it, it means, it, it, to me, like, you know, I'm a fan of Iron Maiden. Yeah. Or you know, Agnostic Front's not. A, I'm a fan of theirs, but they're friends. But I don't look at. I don't consider Iron Maiden friends, even mm. though I've met them and I had the honor of meeting them. But I'm a fan of theirs. But it's like they're here. Yeah. And I don't look at Biohazard as any different than people who come see us. Like we're the same. You know what I mean? We're you know right now the Departed is on and. and I'm talking to you, which I'm happy and honored to. Yeah. But I know in the back of my head, I'm like, "Fuck, I could be inside watching the band, watching the band," because yeah. I'm a fan. You know, yeah, we're all, it. and yeah. that's what I think. Um, I know separates us from other bands, maybe. Hmm. Yeah. I so I don't like the word fans. It's more like family, <laughs> friends. You know? Yeah. Yeah. 
people get on you. Sometimes you haven't seen for a few years because you haven't been back to the country, then they turn up yeah. at your venue. And, it's, yeah. Yeah. and then you have a lot of friends that, that, that uh, travel around and, you know, they get to see us and, you know, different, you know, they'll come to, some of the cities are closer than, you know, than the, and easier to drive to. So yeah. they travel around and see us. It's cool. Let's have a chat briefly about the Australian Soundwave tour. Massive. Yeah. Awesome. Because I know you guys were really looking forward to that last time. Soundwave had to be probably the coolest festival, touring festival that we've ever played. And um, and equally as frustrating. Yeah. Because there were so many great bands that you wanted to see, but the stages were so spread out and the times would change every day and it's every every day is a different a different layout. Yeah. So you you know, some days you had to take you could walk from your dressing room, some days you had to take a shuttle. Right. And then you're like, when is Dillinger play? Dillinger plays at this time. When does, you know, Hatebreed play? Like, so people that are on the same stage as you, you're with the whole time. So we, we're lucky to, to, um, to be with our friends at Hatebreed and Crow Mags. Um, and that part was great. Yeah. But trying to navigate the, the, the layout of, of Soundwave as an artist, as a, fan, as a band, and as a fan of other bands, it, that was the, down, the hard part. Yep. But you know what? It's be- that's a, you know least of the problems. <laughs> you know what I mean? So many great bands. It was great. Yeah. So you get you, you know you were, I was able to catch Slipknot one day. Yeah. You know System of a Down another day, um, Marilyn Manson another day, and then you know shit like that. Excellent. Yeah. Cool. And um, going back to obviously your material, um, Reborn in Defiance me out a little while now. Have you got anything else? Is there anything else in the pipeline? Can the fans expect any new stuff? Right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right there. The whole new record. No, we're working on ideas. We've been writing and, and putting stuff together. Yeah. After this tour, we're going to go home and, and, uh, and put it together through the final meat grinder, we call it. Yeah. And that's when it becomes like the stamp of buyer's approval, you know? So that you can write all you want, but it's it's putting the songs, when you really play them together as a band, that they they kind of melt into like a, you know, a band song, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, is it going to be... You're looking at what sort of releases you're looking at on this one. You're going to go for full-blown sort of a vinyl release as well as CD and download. Or? That's like the stuff that we don't really pay attention to at this point right yeah. now because we're writing. All, right now, all that matters is the music. You yeah. know, the, so the, the lyrics and the music are what's coming together now. After that's together, then we start, you know, thinking about those ideas and yeah. collectively as a band, individually we have our own ideas. But musically, we don't want. Um, I don't want to have any song on the record that we can't play live. You know, sometimes yeah. Biohazard has always done that. It's great where we can experiment and do different things. But and and with that, sometimes there's songs that sound that work better on a record, but they just don't have that um, that live element that yeah. we like mm. for the live show. You know, um, this record we want to have just you know 11, 12 songs that we can play live and. They measure up with punishment and some of the classics, you know. Yeah. So, so obviously, when it comes to gigging and getting a set list together, how difficult is it to get? For me, it's easy. Yeah. But I'm in, I'm one member of the band. <laughs> you know? um, so is it all done as a band decision? Yeah, yeah. And I think we all want what's you know what's best. Like we all have our own vision of what songs work best live. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's just a matter of, of you know coming up with agreement about that. So the the um, the end result is a you know hopefully a kick-ass biohazard set, you know. Yeah. Sometimes we change it up a little bit. Last night I had a you know a couple ideas. Let's try this. Hey, let's play this song. I felt like it was good. And usually it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. You turn around, you play a song, and you're like, nah, that kind of killed the vibe. We shouldn't yeah. have done that. And then sometimes people call out songs. You know, let's try this. Can you play this song? And if we if if it's in the front of lobe of everybody's memory, yeah. we'll play it. You know. If it's something that we haven't played in a long time, we can't just pull it off. Yeah. You know. That must get, <laughs> must get difficult when someone says, um, shouts out something you're like, actually it's been X amount of years since we've actually played that song. Yeah, it, mm. and it's not really cool to say that either. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I mean, we have, you know, 10, 10 records or something like that, yeah. and, and 140 songs, maybe, over our career. And it's tough to, you know, pull that out. I get more people... Um, calling out songs lately that um that we haven't played so i have the mental note of you know 
Yeah. Next tour, let's play this one. I had a lot of requests for this. I had a lot of requests for that. Tonight we, today we rehearsed a song called "Remember." We haven't played in the UK. I don't think ever. So we're gonna play that tonight. And see how it goes. So, when it comes to obviously producing, like, say, like, say you on good back catalogue yep. of songs on the albums and stuff like that. Have you got material which never really made it to an album? You got sort of like started writing it, you started jamming it, and you went, uh, actually no, we and then put that to one side to work on that at a later date. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you ever thought about going back to and working so, on those? Sometimes I remember on this new record on Reborn Defiance, we had a song called it's not the song Reborn. Mm. Um, which we're playing tonight. That was a, a song that um, that we we had worked on it, and it was one of the last songs that we were working on for the record. And I remember it just wasn't together. It still had some ideas, and I remember our producer Toby was like, "You know, that's not going to make the record. You're not. You guys aren't going to finish it. We need to focus on these other songs." I'm like, "No, man. Trust me. I, it'll come together." And I would at night I would go home and try to come up with different ideas. And, uh, and I'd come back in and I'd play some of the ideas and we'd all kind of work on, on the song here and there. But then eventually it came together and it's, and it's in my opinion, it's one of my favorite songs of the record for a different reason, you know, for various reasons. But um, but it, it was funny that that song kind of almost ended up in that back burner kind of yeah. thing. Um, and then there's, there's always this, you know, like I think any true artist, is you know you, you you don't write for an album mm. you just creativity flows you yeah. can't turn it on and off it's like a faucet you know it's not like a faucet um, and for me that's why I always have to have my gear here I have to be able to if I have an idea I have to be able to write it down or record it yeah so when we make a record whatever you're working on at that time becomes what um, it becomes the, like the foundation or the building blocks for your your record yep and the um, sometimes you know you, you have an idea that's just not right there yet you know it just doesn't work and then you just put it away it, it doesn't you have to eventually draw you know a line that's okay you know what we need to focus like you know like I said yeah. our producer was saying we need to focus on these songs yeah. you know and if something comes up then it comes up you know there's oh. there's songs in our, on our records that um, at the last minute we pulled them together and they were just you know Mm. Happen to be to fall in the right place at the right time, and everybody seemed to, to like it, and uh, and end up on the record. You know, that's very cool. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I'd like to thank you so much for taking time and chat with us. Thank you, brother. I'm gonna let you chill out, get get your head together. Obviously, the next couple of bands <laughs> due on any second. Yep. Um, looking forward to seeing you take to the stage this evening. Me too, brother. Have a cracking rest of the tour. We'll be following you closely. Cheers. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, brother.